He wouldn't listen, so I shot him. You shot him? Oh, yes, I did. And you shot him dead? I did. So, how often do they let you make calls from prison? I got away with it. The police department's going to find you. And when we find you, you will go on trial. Phoenix police are set to seek charges in the seven-year-old death of an Ahwatukee Foothills man. Now, here is the name of the person that police say is Ahwatukee Sue. Megan Suzanne Vice. Sergeant Tratter, thank you for being with us. Uh, you're welcome, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Uh, we're excited, cautiously, of course. Uh, what can you tell us, first of all, uh, there was a name published in the newspaper today. Uh, is is the name in the newspaper the name of that person? Uh, that is correct. I can tell you the name that is out there. Uh, that is true and accurate. We do have a positively identified uh, as of uh, last year, and we just uh, uh, submitted four criminal charges uh, within the last 24 hours. We started getting calls from listeners literally three days later. Uh, well, what's happened with that uh, Sue from Ahwatukee? A little time frame here, uh, Tom. As you're well aware, if you received that call, and that was on November 3rd of 2006, and you're nationally syndicated, so you actually received thousands of phone calls from around the country. Our investigators were very limited on the information. We just had a name, Sue, and she mentioned she lived in Ahwatukee. That's essentially all we had. So we did a court order, we subpoenaed phone records, and I can tell you there were thousands of phone records that were sent to us. As we started to narrow things down, a couple numbers showed up on the radar screen, and then one particular phone number, and this is about nine months or a year into the investigation, uh, we looked at who that phone was registered to, and it was a cell phone, it came back with a specific name, with the middle name, uh, Suzanne, that piqued our interest greatly. We did some additional follow-up, and lo and behold, the person that was registered to that cell phone was listed as a witness on a suicide incident that took place within the city of Phoenix in 2001. So about seven weeks ago, uh, our case agent called her up and asked if she'd be willing to stop by one of her police facilities to talk, and she said, uh, absolutely. She was talking to her detective for about an hour, and no time during that first 60 minutes did she question why she was called in. She was pretty consistent at that point, uh, telling our detective when asked directly, did you shoot your, your boyfriend? And uh, she denied that. She claimed it was a suicide, said she was upset that maybe she could have prevented it. Uh, but there were, there were some inconsistencies that we found during that interview, and I can tell you there were some very large inconsistencies that from what she said during the initial uh, suicide investigation from 2001 and what she said when she called in your show in 2006. The information that she provided on your show in 2006 when she said where the victim was shot and specifically with what type of weapon he was shot, um, that, that information is true and accurate. During the initial contact, she told us that she was in her living room. She had an argument with her boyfriend. Um, the argument had started the previous night, last to do the morning. The, her boyfriend threatened to shoot himself or kill himself. She shrugged it off and wasn't paying any particular attention. She heard a gunshot, thought he was still joking. She got up from the couch, began to walk toward the kitchen. At that point, she heard a gasping sound. Did not see the victim, didn't look at him. She heard a gasping sound. She got scared. She grabbed her two-year-old child, ran upstairs, called 911, waited for our officers to arrive on scene. And she was consistent with that same statement during the interview. Uh, the problem was... Um, when she called your show, she gave some very detailed information that uh, she would obviously either had to be uh, shoot the victim or, at minimum, be in close proximity when that uh, shooting took place. Man, this is the best radio I've ever heard since being alive, man. I don't even listen to music no more because of you, man. You are you are the man. What's going to happen with that little bitch, uh, Geraldo, man? He's going to get bitch slapped for it. Trying to call you out as a that it was a hoax. Yeah, well, Geraldo did say uh, essentially that it was a hoax, and I'd uh, I'd love to hear his reaction now. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to hear it because that show I appeared on with Geraldo was canceled. <laughs> Punk ass bitch. I want to kiss you. You sure look real fine. Out of my mind, I know. Join is hopping in the country's loud. I'd like.
like to take you out on the dance floor and spin you around. I would to kiss you. I would to kiss you. From Venice Beach, California, it's Flash Friday. All I hear some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you. Really care about it's never kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're gonna need it. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred. 866, here it is, Flash Friday, across North America, Flash Friday, everybody, headlights on across North America, by the way, here on the West Coast, indeed, if you're listening live, just after 5 o'clock Pacific time, everybody's getting out of work, everybody's hitting the freeway now, and we on the radio show that turns the freeway to a goddamn party. I promise you I'd be here all summer long for Flash Friday. And here we are. Now, next Friday, next Flash Friday, we'll be coming to you from the studios of Live 105.3 in Dallas. That's right. Now, we are looking forward to coming back to the Metroplex and seeing hi and saying hi to all our friends at DFW. It's going to be great. We're coming into town for Russ Martin's Live 8, and we are very excited. Very excited. We never have anything less than a blast when we go to Texas. I got to tell you, I think of all the places we go, it's probably my favorite, and we will be there in one week. So this week we are on the Venice Boardwalk, Venice Beach, California, and next week we will be in Dallas. And at some point in time, we'll find our way back to the studio. But I did promise you this summer I would be here for Flash Friday every Friday. And here we are. Flash Friday, headlights on. And ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, show them your knockers. We flash you. You flash us. That's how it works. We have wide open telephones on the top like a show on this Flash Friday. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Of course, as you know, there was the big break in the Awatuki suitcase. Uh, for 21 months, we have not been able to talk about Awatuki Sue, the woman who called our show and said she killed the father of her child. Well, we were not able to tell you anything, and now there are breaks in the case, and they are all over our website, blowmeuptom.com. You can go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. It's all there. You can hear the original phone call. You can be linked up to the video from the Phoenix TV stations. They actually ambushed the woman who is alleged to be Awatuki Sue, whose name is Megan Suzanne Vice. They ambushed her in her driveway, and you can see her talking to the reporter and then peeling out, <laughs> trying to get the hell out of there. Oh, my God. That's all you got to do is go to our website, blowmeuptom.com. Or go to our MySpace, that's myspace.com slash Tom Likas, and uh, you can learn all about the latest developments in the Awatuki Sioux case. But uh, we always told you that was not a hoax. It is not a hoax. And uh, you log on and get all the latest details. There's news stories about this. Oh, my God, up the yin-yang. I think I'm uh, taping an inside edition next week, as a matter of fact, in our studio. So uh, you'll learn all about it. You'll be you'll be begging for mercy. Once Nancy Grace gets her hands on this, you're going to be begging for mercy. And once Larry King gets on this, once that JonBenet Ramsey network gets on this thing, it's all over. And they're in the process. Believe me, they're they're wrapping up. 
Uh, Awatuki, hello? <laughs> What's the question? Wide open telephones on the top like show. We can talk about Awatuki Sewer. Anything else is on your mind here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Here's Holly on the Tom Lyka Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Um, I was just um, a little curious why the um, the sheriff or the cop that you were talking to said that all he had to go on was her name, Sue, and where she was from. Because I remember from the phone call her mentioning you know, that she was a nurse. Um, you know, that they had had a child together and he was avoiding her. And, you know, I'm sure that they know his name as the murder victim or shooting victim. And all they had to do was interview any of his friends to find out if he had a child with someone named Sue. I'm sure someone well, knew. But, but you have to understand, that stuff doesn't do itself. What they had to do was they had to go through a list of all the people who committed suicide. Oh. And there's a lot of them. And so you got to narrow would... down all the people who committed suicide in the area. Then you, got, then you got to figure out which ones might have worked at a hospital. And we don't even know if that's true that he worked at the hospital when you start investigating. Uh, then they got to see how many of them might have had children or might have been living with somebody or might have been. I mean, uh, it's not as easy as you think. What, yeah. what, the, what the sergeant uh, from the uh, uh, Phoenix Police Department was trying to tell you is that police work is, is it's not like television it's a grueling grueling uh, profession and it takes months and months of of very boring investigating to get this kind of information dug up you know it, it's not it's not like what you when you go to google and you type in you know Christina Aguilera and a bunch of results pop up so, well, yeah, and I know that all the TV shows like CSI, they're way unrealistic. It takes months for yeah, a I mean, Do, do you really believe you can sit at a computer and go, let's see, woman named Sue, uh, boyfriend committed suicide. Whoa, there's the name right there. Okay, I, I get I get you. I mean, the, the, I, uh, we were in on the investigation. We were in on some of what they had to do. They had a list of everybody who committed suicide. They had to go through name by name by name all the people who committed suicide. I guess in that area you want to kill yourself because it's so boring. <laughs> well, it's not even that. I mean, Phoenix, Arizona is the fastest, one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in America. There's a large population, a large transient population. And by the way, we were talking about this yesterday. A lot of bizarre stories, a lot of bizarre deaths take place in Arizona. Bodies dumped in the desert and... People who left other states in the Northeast and the Midwest trying to get away from ex-wives or child support or whatever they're trying to get away from. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on in Arizona. Well, I'm just glad they got her. Well, and again, this is only uh, not even half the battle because now the county attorney of Maricopa County, which is where Phoenix is, has to be convinced that there's enough of a case to go ahead and prosecute. Right. So, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot to be done. But trust me when I tell you uh, that what this tells you is how hard police work is. And, and there are many times they do 21 months of work and they get nothing. Right. We never found the woman who peed at my front door, for example. Oh, that's right. I saw that. That was crazy. Right. Of course, somebody who killed the father of her child is a little more important than somebody who peed at my front door. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call, Holly. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Lyka Show coming to you from the, from the Venice Boardwalk on Flash Friday. 1-800-LIKE-IT-TOM. 1-800-LIKE-IT-TOM. Tom, I just got flash. Where? Road on my way home from work, and here comes this hot Asian girl in a 2003 to 2005 Infinity G35, and she just showed me her cans. I love that. How? And did she have nice cans there, John? Yeah, it was like a nice teacup. They weren't the biggest, but it was awesome, Tom. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likey Show. From the Venice Boardwalk, Venice Beach, the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday. 
smack dab in the middle of summer at 1-800-5-800-TOM. It's 1-800-5-800-866. Let's say hi to Ernie on this Flash Friday. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ernie. Hey, how you doing, bud? How you doing? I did. Hey, man, I just got flies going on the 110 South headed towards San Pedro, bro. Really? Tell me what you saw. Uh, it was uh, it was a white chick, and she was on a old, like, Tercel. It was kind of green. She looked a little white trashy, but I don't give a hell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, bro. Hey, man, I wouldn't be able to get this if I was listening to any other station, man. Let me tell you. Man. That's exactly right. Yeah, man, thanks a lot. Hey, keep up all the good work, and uh, let's keep those hoes in check, huh? Absolutely. Ernie, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, my question for you is, if all what Tukey Sue is put on trial for the murder of her boyfriend, would you be willing to testify against her in court? I would absolutely be willing to testify against her in court, and I would be uh, honored to be asked. I hope that transpires and she goes to prison for the rest of her life and can you take me out Kobe Bryant style Tom? I certainly can oh. Oh. this is about us oh. she's so special to me oh. you're beating my heart oh. you're there I breathe oh. she's so special to me oh. 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 it's 1-800-5-800-TOM here comes Steve on the Tom Likas show hello how you doing, Tom? Okay, Steve. How are you? Man, I'm absolutely outstanding. I just wanted to say uh, you got a heck of a show. Uh listen to you a lot. haven't listened to you in the last couple of days. So when I turned the radio on this afternoon, I heard you talking to a lady, and uh, you, you told her that, or you explained to her that police work wasn't as uh, easy as it looks, and there's a whole lot of legwork and a whole lot of paperwork to be done before you can actually... Uh, get a charge to stick and i just wanted to say thanks uh, for at least throwing that out there and uh, appreciate your support and uh if you would take me out with a big bong hit because i gotta get in the roll call <laughs> i certainly will steve here you go <coughs> flash friday wide open telephones on the tom like show from venice beach 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number it's 1-800-5-800-866. Here is Cyrus on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Viva La Fresh Friday. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to say that I've been listening to your show since, you know, I was half my age. My father turned me on to it way long time ago. Very nice. And I'm listening to you, and it feels like I'm getting a head start, man. That's good. I would like to talk to you, though, about, like, um... One little thing that I just have a little bit of a slight deviation. I know you're right about a lot of this stuff, but there's also another side of it. I'd like to talk about marriage. Yes. Um, the reason that a lot of marriages fail for people, at least I think so, I might know nothing in this matter and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that once people get married, they stop putting energy into their relationships and... Ultimately, their relationships fail because they stop paying attention to each other. They stop being romantic. I believe. I believe that the very concept uh, encourages that. It encourages complacency. You uh, each gets the other person to sign a contract. Now you can't have any other people. Now uh, you can't uh, do anything if I cut my hair or if I gain fifty pounds. You're stuck, pal. You're stuck. And so people have no incentive uh, to uh, uh, to keep uh, working at it. That's that's true that there's no incentive to keep working at it. But why in fact, it? women especially have no women especially it. women especially have no incentive because if a marriage doesn't work out, uh, they get tons of lovely cash and prizes. They get lovely parting gifts. Women get lots of money if it doesn't work out. Why should that be a reason for marriage? Well, why should there be a reason for marriage? Well, there's a lot of people who like to get money for doing absolutely nothing. I don't know if you've been aware of that. Well, I've noticed that. There are people who like to sit, get as close as they can nowadays to doing absolutely nothing for money, and that's just how it's set up now. It's right. It's a quantitative system. That's exactly right. 
I mean, look, if divorce wasn't the way it was, I would have a different opinion about marriage. But it is the way it is. Men get screwed. So, I think that there's also a certain amount of personal responsibility that people need to take. It doesn't matter how much. It doesn't matter how much personal responsibility men take. I've been divorced four times. I mean, if the have... woman, if the woman doesn't have to do anything, and if things don't work out, she gets money. There's no incentive for her to work at it. No matter how hard you work at it, if you were the woman who was 180 pounds and cuts her hair like a boy, and says, "What are you going to do?" Then? There's nothing you can do. You're screwed. I would like to ask, though, I'm not trying to make anybody seem like they're slacking off or anything, but I would just like to ask how many of the marriages that fail are the, is the man actually trying to keep the relationship alive? Stop with well? the man trying. You know what? Women are bitches in marriages in this country. Do you understand? They're bitches. Women do not try because they do not have to try. They have all the incentive in the world to sit around going, yeah, I'm not going to do anything. you got two hands. Do it yourself. Point and, taken. And that is what women do. Take it from me. I've been at the front. I know what's going on. Um, I would actually like to point out that my father also was married four times, and one of them was named Susan, just like you. Uh, well, and how did that work out? Um, his fourth marriage um, to my stepmother, he actually died two years after that, so... Um, she actually took all of my inheritance away. Wow, and here you are endorsing marriage. Good work, son. Didn't you learn anything? Uh, I'm not endorsing it. I'm just saying that some of them fail because people don't put energy into it. Well, them. look, some things fail for any number of reasons. We, we, we don't talk about the exceptions to the rule. We talk about the rule. And that is why I figured that I'd be slightly off topic, but I just wanted to play devil's but advocate. No, well, there is no day. topic. I mean, uh, being off topic is the name of the game on our Friday show. But the bottom line is... What is the incentive to sign a contract agreeing to give somebody else half of everything you have? Why should that it be so corrupt like that? Why, wh that's what it is. So why do it? That's a good point. I think that if marriage should exist, I think we should redo the whole concept. Well, when you redo the whole concept, get back to me, and I'll reevaluate my opinion about it. Hey, uh, do you think you could blow me up? Well, uh, of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Karen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Uh, it's doing great. Good. Say, so I've got a question for you. Yes. I have a goal, and my goal is that I want to be a radio talk show host. I've got a niche, a subject, an issue that I think is great, and I know that you're accessible successful, talented, smart, and so I wanted to ask you a question about contracts between me and agents, promoters, things like that. Um, I have a friend who's been in the radio business, long time, sold air, did promos, live remotes, he knows people, this, that. He thinks my idea is great. We want to start local and move it on up to a level such as yours, getting maybe four to five of the 11 national markets. Not right away, but, you know, just working up to that. And I was wondering if you could give me some tips on what I should be looking out for for myself as the talent in the form of the contract. Well, number, number, one, number one, the idea that you're going to get a contract with no experience is a pipe dream. Okay. 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 Now, I started off working in Stanton, Virginia. At a five, at Stanton, Virginia. Exactly. At a 500 watt radio station, which at night went down to 250 watts. Uh huh. Are you willing to do that? I'm willing to do what it takes. Well, that's what it takes. This means you have to leave behind your family. Are you married? Nope. Got kids? Nope. Got a mom? Yeah, but she's 3,000 miles away. Got friends? Yes, a couple. Got a favorite gynecologist? You bet. Right? Got a favorite place to get your manis and petties? Oh, you got to yeah, throw yeah. all that out the window, and you're going to have to move to the middle of nowhere. Okay. Okay. And when you move to the middle of nowhere, they're going to pay you next to nothing. Okay. And they're going to pay you next to nothing. Uh, chances are, no matter how small a town it is, 
uh, you're barely going to be afford to subsist on that. Uh-huh. Most women I know like a more comfortable lifestyle than that. Most women I talk to who live in a city like Los Angeles, they go, well, I don't know. can I just do this and stay in L.A.? Why do I have to go, like, out of town? Oh, that's okay. I live in almost the middle of nowhere, and I was just about to where, sell my house. Where are you? In Eugene, Oregon. Oh, you're in Eugene, Oregon. Well, there are radio stations in Eugene, Oregon. Yes, there are. In fact, I've got an appointment Tuesday to talk to one of the program managers here at the local at one of the local AM stations. That's very nice. Yeah, I'm excited. That's good. Well, I mean, for you, if you already live in a small town, by the way, do you have a job? I am self-employed. Okay, the best way to get started for you is to not give up your day job. And to see if there's a weekend show you can do on a local radio station. Well, that's what I'm going for. And my friend, uh, he's the know-how with all of the, you know, how the radio situation and all that stuff works. And he's got people that are in advertising and that used to work with him and DJ friends that actually live locally here that I'm very familiar with. That You know, we, we, we think we can make this happen, but my concern is, you know, watching out for me, number one, and, and making sure... I mean, I know nothing about how the money is made and, you know, the splits that people get. Well, people, like you that. have nothing to split because you have no experience. Well, true, but as as this... If, the, if this works but out... But you're nowhere near that point. Do you yeah. know that in... Ni- I'm going to tell you honestly. You know, I had worked around in radio on the fringes of radio... I had done character voices on shows. I had written for shows. I'd been a producer, like like Gary, who's sitting here with me right now. I'd been a producer. I'd been a screener, like Dino. I had done all these little jobs in talk radio. I used to work part-time at various radio stations. I didn't have a full-time on-air job in radio until I was 25 years old, and that was in 1981, and that is when I went to Stanton, Virginia, and I was on the air from 5.30 to midnight every night. And I had, to, by the way, I had to turn the power down to 250 watts every night so I didn't interfere with Canada. <laughs> and there were many nights I just didn't bother to turn the power down. I just took calls from Ontario. It was very exciting. Oh, I'll bet. But um, I had to work there. Someday I'm going to play tape of that uh, because I've been digging through and I, I have found some of the old tape from my job in Stanton, Virginia, with the jingle package that was based on the 1965 Broadway musical Promises, Promises, starring Jerry Herman. Actually, it was starring, uh, uh, no, no, it was starring uh, Jerry Orbach. Jerry Herman wrote Promises, Promises. Jerry Orbach, that's five letters and six letters, and both named Jerry. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so, uh, yes, I, I, I did that. And so that was 1981, and then I went to Albany, New York with no contract, and I was making $15,000 a year. Then I went to 1982, I went up to $18,000 a year, no contract, 1983. I, was, I made it all the way up to $28,000 a year after three years doing it. Not bad. Yeah, but it took me until year four to actually get a decent salary and to get a contract. Yeah. So you are way ahead of, of where, you know, you're, you're thinking too far ahead. You don't know if you'd be any good on the radio. You may even have a good idea, but you don't know if you would be any good on the radio. True. And having friends in the radio business doesn't guarantee you a job. Otherwise, these people would have you on the air right now. Oh, right. Well, I, I uh, actually considering making a life change selling my properties here, having some money to live on. There's no life change. You could stay in Eugene, Oregon and work on the weekend at a radio station. Well, exactly. Why hasn't it already happened? Yeah, this all just came about yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. So you came up with an idea for a radio show yesterday, and now you're worried about how you're going to split the the revenue, uh, the proceeds of the show. Yeah, because... It's just happening very, very quickly. I, I've already. No, no, but it's I, not. I, nothing is happening. Thirty this morning. Please, I don't delusion you. I, I don't want to delu- disillusion you, but don't be delusional. Nothing is happening. I understand. Somebody that. is doing somebody a favor and taking a meeting with you. That's it. Well, that's a start. Do you understand how many people will reject you before you get a chance? And I'm prepared for that. 
Well, yeah. I don't know how prepared you are because you're already splitting up the revenue. You're already figuring out the revenue split. <laughs> well, you know what? Sixty percent of zero is. Yes, I do. Uh, it's zero, and that's that's exactly what you've got right now. You've got nothing. That's right. Now that doesn't mean you'll always have nothing, but how old are you? Fifty. So yesterday you had this brilliant idea, and tomorrow you're going to be in the radio business splitting revenue. Well, you never know. I guess I do. You know what? I don't know much about anything. I'm just a moron, and I can't put oil in my car. I don't know how to put even the windshield wiper fluid in my car. You, I don't even open the hood of my car. You understand? Yeah. You asked me where the spark plugs were, I couldn't tell you. There's a lot of things I don't know how to do, Okay. There's one thing I know better than anything in the world, and it's the radio business. Uh huh. Understand, I've been in it since I was 14 years old. You yeah. have nothing, okay? You're starting with zero. And you'll probably have close to zero for the next several years. Okay. Do you understand? Now, I'm not trying to discourage you, I'm trying to make you realistic. And you have to understand, if you really want this, you have to start off with the idea there's going to be no revenue to split. If a local radio station gives you a job, you know what you're going to pay you? Peanuts. How much is peanuts? Uh, cheap. They give them away. Well, actually, they charge you now on the airline. So, you know. You'll be lucky if you get $10 an hour. And that's okay because I've got other means. To well, but, but what are you with this revenue? What? Are, well, I don't know. I've got an agent and to split the revenue. It's like they're not going to be a splitting of the revenue. The radio station has all of the revenue, and they're going to give you ten dollars an hour to, to work there. Okay. That's the split. That's the revenue split. Radio right. station gets one hundred percent of the revenue, then they give you ten dollars for every hour you're there. That's the revenue split. And I want to tell you, there's not a lot of agents. Agents get 10%. Not a lot of agents want to get a dollar an hour uh, for your services. So, for example, if you showed up on Saturday and did a four-hour shift, your agent would get $4. Okay. So do you think there are agents who are going to be clamoring for this idea you have? No. Uh, uh, darling, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm trying, you know, your friend, and I don't know what his agenda is, or right? if you're boning him, or I don't know what's going oh, on. No, no, no. No, I'm just saying, or if you if he wants to bone you and you have he just you just haven't figured it out yet or whatever. No, 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 no that's not. Because guys all, are ge generally okay. not in the habit of helping out chicks, uh, damsels in distress. Okay, but uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that whatever you've been fed here, uh, trust me when I tell you, <laughs> the radio business is a shrinking business. It is cutting and cutting and cutting. It is not growing and growing right now. There are some exceptions to the rule. The format we have and the show we have uh, is proprietary content. And so it's one of the few growth areas in the radio business. Huh? But, you know, we've been doing this a very long time. Well, we have generated tens of millions of dollars of revenue over the years. Uh-huh. Okay. You are at the $10 an hour level if you get a job. Got it. Okay. So imagine now. You have to, I don't know how far you live from the station. How far do you live from the station where you're going for the interview? Um, less than two miles. Less than two miles. Okay. So you're going to spend about a buck and a half, two bucks on gasoline driving down the station to make, if you're lucky, 30 or 40 bucks. Minus taxes. And, and you know, to start, I'm willing to work for free. I'm willing to do, you know some free work in order to see if it'll work, in order to see if it'll take off, in order to see if it's something okay. that is of interest. All right. And but that might mean you might have to move to another small town where you have no connections and you know nobody. Uh-huh. So there you are in Eugene, Oregon. And what if you had to move to Bangor, Maine? Well, that's true. I wouldn't know anybody there. I'd right. I'd... See, but I'm not the person that's doing all of that end of things. That's, that's well, how many, wait a minute. How many? How big is your entourage for that thirty or forty dollars a week you're going to be making? Well, I've had a lot of people tell me that that I should either write a book, be a consultant, be on the circuit. You people know, say things this. like, "Darling, you know." People say things like that all the time, and that doesn't mean you're not talented. It just means that at fifty, why haven't you done any of that? 
You have because you've had no motivation to do it and no interest. That could be part of it. It's not could be done. I'm I'm a little older than you. I went out and did it and you didn't. True. And and if you wanted to write a book, you'd have written a book. If well, you if you wanted to write a write, write a column for a newspaper, you'd have done it weren't my things that I thought that I wanted to do. If you wanted to do a radio show, you'd have been on the radio. I was on the radio at 14 years old. You know where you were at 14? Listening to the radio. Absolutely. So you see, darling, I think your interest level is low and your motivation level is low. And if it's low, I doubt you have what it takes to, to, to be told you're a piece of crap, which I was once told that I have speech impediment at 15 and that I should think of another profession. And the kind of cruel stuff people will say to you, you think you can handle it, but you ain't heard nothing yet. Imagine I was 15 and I had to hitchhike and take a railroad train and it took me two and a half hours to get to a radio station at 15 only to be told I should think of another profession. At 15, I was told to give up. Well, I'm glad what, you do you, what, what do you think they're going to tell you? You're 50. You've never even thought about doing this. Yeah. I, I don't know. They're going to be that. cruel, and you're going to have a hard time handling it. No matter how much you say you can, you're going to have a hard time. Think hard before you embark on this journey, darling. Thank you. Tom like 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Can't get enough of you, man. I have you at work, I have you in the car. When I get out of the car, I bring the radio inside and still listen to you. It's the Tom Likey Show. Yeah, it's the Tom Likey Show. Coming to you from Venice Beach. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Here comes Mike of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm okay, Mike. Good. I, I just wanted to call in because I thought it was really funny that how you don't advocate marriage or anything like that or relationships too much. Right. But uh, I've been in a relationship for a while. And if you use your, your uh, the, the way you, you do things and your theories on things, uh, what you're really doing is you're promoting... Uh, the perfect relationship. In what way? Well, if you think about it, women love to be uh, treated like crap. Yes. And if you want to keep spice in the in in a relationship, um, what you do is if you follow your rules, you'll find that the women will never want to get rid of you. They'll always want to hang around with you. They'll always want to. Uh, um, they stay committed to you. And so it's really funny because I kind of, you know, really just do what I want. Um, I've been in a relationship for a while and uh, found out that it's, it's the best way to stay in a relationship is, is by doing what you do. It's really kind of funny. It's, it's really a good combination advice for marriage and for a relationship with also getting laid. Well, um, I imagine that might be true. The only thing is that uh, even with all of that, when you get married, you are still in a position where if things don't work out, you have to pay. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I'm not into the marriage thing, but uh, I've been in a relationship for a while, and I'm happy where I'm at, and I'm not uh, get married. I have no need for it. But um, I do what I want to do, and I think what that does is, is when you're a little freer and open, it keeps the other person much more, uh, uh, what could I say, interested in keeping you happy. It keeps them much more on the ball. And so uh, it makes a, a much more of a spicier relationship. They don't get bored, you know. And so I think my, I mean, I've been using the Tom Likas, you know, uh, way for a long time, and I found out that uh, if you if you follow Tom Likas kind of rule of thumb, you're going to find out that you'll get a, a great relationship if you want. You know, it's, it it runs both ways. 
because what you're advocating is not only how to get laid, but it, it promotes a great relationship. It really does. By the way, it also works for your career. Learning to say no in your career, no, I won't work overtime, no, I won't lift heavy objects for women in the office, no, I don't work for free. <laughs> you would be amazed what that does for your career. It certainly has does wonders for mine. Dan on the Tom Likas Show, Flash Friday from Venice Beach. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Uh, just wanted to let you know uh, the guys at the Bubble Loves Fun Show really, really uh, are appreciative of what you've done. Uh, they, they played uh, the clip that you had that's going all over on uh, their show this morning, and they were just, uh, they, they were so thrilled. They, 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 nothing but top notch props to you guys. Bubba has been nothing but nice to us, and uh, of course, as a result, we have nothing but nice things to say about Bubba. He's been uh, just great to us. It was funny because at the time they were playing the clip, it was also going over CNN, and they were uh, uh, kind of flipping a lot of uh, stuff to CNN for saying uh, uh, a radio host. Uh, they kept saying, well, why don't you just say Tom Likas? It was Tom. It was Tom. <laughs> uh, the Bubba the Love Fun show, they really, they, they you know, I, I, I wish you guys would actually, uh, I, I, can, I can only think it'd be radio plutonium for you guys to uh, to talk together. Well, to I, I do. I, I do like Bubba a lot. And now i got to take a break. I thank you for the call. The Tom Likas Show.